Hi there, and welcome back to Health Awareness. If you are looking for clear, trustworthy updates on HIV treatment breakthroughs, you are in the right place. Let's jump straight into today's important development and what it means for you. Today we're tackling a question that's been at the center of global health for more than 40 years. Can we move beyond lifelong medication and actually achieve sustained remission? A functional cure for HIV. We're not speculating. We've got new trial data, and it's changing how researchers think about the possible. This episode focuses on two independent landmark clinical trials, the RIO trial and the FRES trial. Both use engineered, broadly neutralizing antibodies, BN ABS, in a remarkably strategic way. And the results? For a subset of participants, they're nothing short of game-changing. Before we walk through the trials, though, we need to be crystal clear on the problem. Why has curing HIV been so difficult for decades? Two core biological obstacles explain most of it. Rapid viral evolution and latency, the hidden reservoir. Let's start with mutation. HIV mutates as it replicates rapidly and without much proofreading. Imagine an assembly line with no quality control. Each new generation of virus is a little different. In a single patient within weeks, you are not facing one viral strain. You are facing a constantly shifting swarm. That makes designing a single one size fits all vaccine nearly impossible. And then T here is latency. HIV integrates its genetic material, the provirus into the DNA of memory T cells. These infected cells go quiet. They don't make viral proteins and therefore remain invisible to both the immune system and to antiretroviral drugs. So even when art suppresses active virus to undetectable levels, reservoirs remain. Stop the drugs, even for a short time, and the reservoir can wake up, causing a rapid rebound. So a cure that's practical for millions must confront both the moving target and the invisible hiding places. The cleverness in the new trials comes from targeting both problems at once, using engineered antibodies to neutralize circulating virus while simultaneously teaching the immune system to recognize and clear infected cells. Exactly. The idea builds on a natural phenomenon. A small number of rare people develop very broad, very potent antibodies after years of infection. Those elite neutralizers give us a blueprint. Scientists isolate those antibodies, optimize them, and deliver them early, before the reservoir grows too large, and in combinations so the virus can't escape with a single mutation. Okay, now the trial designs. Both Rio and Fress enrolled people who had already been on effective antiretroviral therapy. That's important. Their viral loads were suppressed. Participants received injections of paired engineered BN abs. Then, and this is the bold part, their daily art was paused under close monitoring. The central question was simple and high stakes. How long could someone stay off art while staying suppressed, thanks to the antibodies and their own immune system? The control groups make the findings meaningful. When people stop art and get nothing, no antibody therapy, viral rebound is almost universal within a matter of weeks. That's our baseline. Left alone, the reservoir wins. The interesting part is what happened when participants received the engineered antibody cocktail. Let's start with Rio, led by Sarah Fiddler. This trial enrolled 34 participants who started art early after infection. This matters because early treatment usually means a smaller reservoir and a more robust immune system. The control group of 34 who received placebo almost all rebounded within four six weeks. That's our expected outcome. But in the antibody arm, 22 of 34 maintained suppression at 20 weeks, an immediate striking response. And the long-term data is what truly surprised folks. Overextended follow-up. Six of those 34 participants, about 17%, remained off art with durable viral control for at least two years. That's not just a temporary delay, that's a long drug-free remission that persisted long after the injected antibodies themselves had cleared from the body. Now switch continents, the FRES trial in South Africa, led by Thumbi and Dungu. Different population, different viral clade, clade C, and a younger female cohort. FRES enrolled 20 participants who likewise had early treatment. Here, six of 20, Roughly 30% retained viral suppression for a full year, and one person remained off art for two and a half years. That's cross-population consistency. That's hard to ignore. Those percentages, 17% and 30%, are not universal cures. But for the individuals who achieved long-term remission, 
something fundamental changed. The data suggest the antibodies didn't simply suppress the virus while they were present. Instead, they appear to have trained the immune system, particularly CD8 plus T cells, to identify and eliminate infected cells more effectively. In short, the antibodies acted less like a drug and more like a temporary targeted coach for the immune system. Let's dig into the mechanism. These engineered antibodies do three key things. First, they neutralize free virus, preventing new cells from being infected. Second, their FC tails recruit immune effector mechanisms like antibody-dependent cellular cytotoxicity, ADCC, essentially flagging infected cells for destruction. And third, and most intriguing, they may provide a vaccinal effect, forming antibody virus complexes that stimulate durable T cell responses. In animal models, when CD8 plus T cells are removed, BNAB-mediated control collapses, which suggests T cells are central to sustained suppression. A key innovation, the trials used paired antibodies, two potent BN, abs that bind different conserved sites on the virus. Why is that crucial? Because if the virus can escape one antibody with a single mutation, it's still vulnerable to the second. Resistance then requires multiple simultaneous mutations, exponentially harder. So the combination strategy raises the evolutionary barrier for escape. Another engineering breakthrough is half-life extension. Scientists modify the FC region to enhance binding to the FCRN recycling receptor. The antibodies stay in circulation much longer, sometimes months from a single injection. That gives the immune system a sustained window to learn, adapt, and build memory. But not everyone benefited. Why? Several likely factors explain the difference between responders and non-responders. First, reservoir size. Those treated early tend to have smaller, less diverse reservoirs. Second, pre-existing viral sensitivity. Some participants' viruses were fully susceptible to the cocktail, others less so. Third, immune health, exhaustion versus readiness. These variables matter a lot. We should also acknowledge the human reality. In the FRS trial, two participants who were successfully controlling the virus eventually chose to go back on art. Why? Because monitoring and uncertainty carry a psychological toll. For some, the guaranteed safety and low anxiety of a daily pill is preferable to living with the unknowns of an experimental remission. The science can be transformative, but the lived experience also shapes treatment choices. Let's talk about strategic next steps. Both research teams are expanding. Rio is testing whether a deliberate short rebound before antibody infusion, a controlled, monitored immune rehearsal, might strengthen immune memory. Fress is planning larger trials that include chronically infected patients, and other groups are adding TLR agonists or vaccine components to amplify the vaccine. Like effect, why might a short, controlled rebound help? The immune system learns from exposure. If you let a small, safely controlled amount of virus reappear, that antigen exposure can serve as real training data for T-cells. Combined with antibodies that flag infected cells, the immune system might generate a more potent, durable response than it would with antibody alone. But that strategy is risky and requires exquisite monitoring. It's a trade-off, better immune education, but with increased potential for harm if viral levels get too high. Trials will have to balance those factors carefully. We're also seeing trials that incorporate shock and kill elements, latency, reversing agents that nudge dormant proviruses into activity, making them visible to immune effectors. In FRS, a TLR7 agonist called Vesitolimod was used to awaken hidden virus while antibodies and trained T cells were present to neutralize and clear it. That's a coordinated multi-pronged approach, expose, neutralize, and eliminate. Let's zoom out. Even modest percentages of long-term remission could have huge public health implications. If we can identify the biological and demographic predictors of response, who is most likely to convert to drug, free control, then targeted strategies could scale. Early treatment programs, tailored antibody cocktails, vaccine boosts, or periodic immune training regimens could transform the standard of care. And the implications go beyond HIV. If we can teach the immune system to control a virus that mutates fast and hides deep, that suggests a new paradigm for chronic infectious diseases. Hepatitis B, latent tuberculosis, certain viral reservoirs. The idea of engineering an immune memory that maintains control without chronic therapy is revolutionary. But caution is essential. These are early trials with careful selection, early treated patients with smaller reservoirs and close monitoring. Scaling to millions worldwide across diverse populations and health systems will be challenging. 
We still need to understand long-term durability, rare late rebounds, and the psychological and logistical dimensions of managing remission. So where does that leave us? The Rio and Fress trials show that for a meaningful minority of people, a single course of engineered BN, ABS can spark a transition from external drug dependence to internal immune control lasting years. That's not a universal cure yet, but it's the clearest signal we've had that a functional cure is possible, that the immune system can be coached to become the guard long-term. We stand at an inflection point. The path forward will require larger, more inclusive trials, smarter combinations, and a careful balancing of risk and benefit. But the fundamental lesson is powerful. Precision biologics can be more than stopgaps. They can be catalysts for lasting immune change. Thanks for watching today's video. If you found this helpful, like the video, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you don't miss our next video. Because we'll be watching these trials closely and bringing you the updates as they arrive. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and be well.